Hi, everybody. This is David. Welcome to the Stream of David. In our first episode, I told you about myself, about my journey into spirituality and into channeling. Then I brought in the stream and allowed them to speak directly to you and tell you why they're here and who they are. This was my first time sharing the stream publicly. And I have to tell you that I'm still not used to hearing myself speak in that funny accent when I go and listen to the playback. But their perspective has great value. That's why I'm sharing it with you. One of the times that having the perspective of the stream really helped me was after the election of Donald Trump. On the morning of November 9th, I was shocked and disappointed, as many were. The election of Donald Trump had the ability to bring harm to my family directly. When I woke that morning and heard the news, I was alone in a hotel room out of town on a business trip. I felt my emotions begin to spiral down, and I've trained myself to recognize that as soon as it starts and stop and quiet my mind and meditate to gain clarity on the topic. I did this. I quickly came into alignment and I got sources perspective on the election of Donald Trump. And I will tell you, it was very different than my perspective, but it helped me quite a bit. But instead of telling you about that myself, I'm going to pause for just a moment, get into my meditative state and allow the stream to come and tell you for themselves. We are here, David. David has asked for us to come forth, and we have collectively set the intention to discuss a topic around which there is much asking. This topic is the result of the 2016 presidential election and Donald Trump's rise to power. We like this topic because it is an excellent example of the attraction and polarity of your universe. First, we'll talk about Mr. Trump himself. You do not need us to tell you that he is a man with a great ego. But this ego is a result of the polarity going on within him. For he has great insecurities. His ego is driven by these. He believes, authentically, that he is a very, very intelligent person, one of the most intelligent people that have ever lived. He believes in his greatness, and he believes that he can save what he sees as a very broken country. This propelled him to the position where he is today. This propelled him or inspired him to run for office, There were times where he did not believe he would win. His ego had a hard time dealing with that. But he had the supreme confidence that he was the best person for the job. Throughout his life, Mr. Trump developed a pattern of thought that drove him to success, that helped him overcome what he saw as adversity. He believed that whatever he did was the very best thing that he could possibly do. Whatever he built, whatever he owned was the very best. This propelled him to great success and admiration of many. He also tapped into the polarity of the universe and identified a group of people who were very against the then current administration for very specific reasons. And Mr. Trump 
did an excellent job tapping into that mindset. The fear that many people experienced with the idea of his becoming president helped propel him to that office as well. So from a universal perspective, from a source perspective, we are seeing a perfect example of the law of attraction and the polarity of your universe. The law of attraction allowed him to attract what he wanted. The law of attraction also allowed all of those pushing against all of those voting for the other person as a vote against him to help propel him to office. So therefore he is in office and now you cannot turn on your television or open your internet or look at your social media without seeing something against him. There are protests. There is a lot of pushing against him and his presidency. And we are here to tell you as long as this pushing against continues to occur, he will remain powerful. Now, the polarity of your universe will eventually swing and begin to work against him. It is the natural order of things. But the pushing against, the constant news stream, the constant thought against will prolong his reign of power. Our guidance regarding politics and this subject in specific is to remember that you create your sphere of reality. There is no government that can directly impact your life. Your government only has the power that you give to it, just like anything else. If you turn your attention away from the news, you turn your attention away from Mr. Trump, you turn your attention away from all of those that are pushing against, focus on your own happiness, your own abundance, your own life, you will be happy you will be abundant, and you will be joyful. We understand that many of you feel the need to be informed, to know what's going on in your world. But it's very important that if you're going to take this information in, that you understand your relationship to it, how it impacts you, and that you have the tools to read something and not internalize it. Understand that you're reading a story about someone else, somewhere else, that has nothing to do with you. If you cannot do that, it is our guidance that you turn off your television, that you use Facebook far less than you do today, that you are off the internet, that you are not reading or listening to the news, that you instead turn your focus to what is wanted and experiencing the joys of your positive manifestations. There are far too many who give away their power to their government, to their employer, to their family members, to their friends, to their neighbor, to the person in the car next to them. And when you give your power away, you turn down the volume on your stream. And when you turn down the volume, your connection is weak. When your connection is weak, your ability to manifest those things that you desire is far less than when you are connected and your volume is turned up. You may ask how in the world you are supposed to turn your attention away from something that is being broadcast everywhere all the time. We are not telling you to place your head in the sand and not live life. Our guidance, though, is to pay far less attention than you typically do. And when you do take in the news or interact on social media, that you do so from your place of clarity, that you meditate daily, that you get in touch with your stream, that you understand how these things impact you, meaning that they do not, unless you allow them to. You all have varying levels of connection or vibration on various topics. There's one topic where Things come very easily to you. You manifest your desires with no problem. Yet there's another topic where you have a lot of trouble. So every topic is really different. And in your clarifying meditations, 
you need to focus first on general well-being, connecting to your stream, and then from your place of clarity, you can begin to dissect that topic. For example, when David first moved to San Francisco, the long commutes and heavy traffic were very stressful to him. He desired very much to have a less stressful commute each day. We guided him to remember to set his intentions toward his journey every day when he got into his car. He had done this in the past, but had long forgotten that he was doing it, and his daily commute was simply on autopilot. Morning would come, he would get ready, get in his car, and go get into traffic. He began taking time when he first got into his car in the morning, sitting, appreciating the car, appreciating the fact that he had a car, appreciating the good weather he was going to drive into, appreciating the fact that he was alive and well and breathing, and setting his intentions for a safe and stress-free journey. On the very first day, he noticed a less stressful commute. He continued this practice each morning. And before long, he would notice being on a busy freeway and looking in the rearview mirror and realizing that the nearest car was several hundred feet behind him and looking ahead and realizing that the nearest car was several hundred feet ahead of him. He literally, on a busy freeway in Northern California, on a weekday morning during rush hour, had the freeway to himself. He continues his practice today and ever since has had nothing but safe and stress-free commutes. This was an easy manifestation as there was far less resistance around this as with other topics. A stress-free drive to work certainly pales in comparison to a bodily condition that has been lingering for years or a lack of money or a lack of connection to humans around you. But stop and think about it. Think about having the ability to change traffic patterns on a regular basis to suit what you want. Even though David has had a lot of success focusing and manifesting throughout his life, this is yet another new, fresh example of how something small can actually manifest big results that are seemingly impossible. So now that when he's focused on manifesting something that seems much larger, again, an improved bodily condition, more money, greater freedom, he can reach into his manifestational tool chest and pull this memory out of sitting and appreciating and intending and manifesting over and over again, easy, fun, joyful, safe, and stress-free drives in morning weekday California traffic. We jokingly say, if you can manifest here, you can manifest anywhere. Now back to the topic of politics. Since we've blended with David, we will use him and his life as an example very often in our teachings. One of the things that has helped him make peace around this topic is remembering back to the presidency of George W. Bush. In 2000, when President Bush was elected, David was living in one of the contested counties in Florida. And having been a big fan of Bill Clinton and the results of his presidency, David had a lot of resistance to the idea of George W. Bush becoming president. But from his life experience, he was already very confident in his ability to manifest whatever he wanted. Though he certainly couldn't manifest the president of his choice, he could manifest the life of his choice. By 2002, he was working in the job of his dreams, earning more money than he had ever earned. In 2004, he bought a beautiful home in a country club neighborhood north of Orlando, and completely remodel it. He owned dream cars, a Mercedes, and a Porsche. And by 2008, he had been promoted yet again and moved to Seattle, Washington, into a million-dollar home in Bellevue outside of Seattle. During this period, David's focus was on material things, and he had obviously manifested everything that he was looking for. And he later realized that while he did not appreciate the presidency of George W. Bush, that during that eight-year period, his life had been just fine. 
He had the financial abundance he was looking for. He had the material things that he wanted to manifest. He enjoyed his work very much, and he'd established some lifelong friendships. So the fear in pushing against the George W. Bush presidency prolonged it for eight years, created some things that many view as detrimental to the country. But due to the polarity of the planet, of the universe, the pendulum eventually swung in the opposite direction. The very nature of politics is very similar to that of religion, with the basis being of one group looking to control the actions of others. When you came here, when you manifested in physical form, your intentions were clear. Your intention was to be free. Your intention was to lead a joyful life. Your intention was also to place obstacles in your path for the joy of overcoming them. Our guidance is for you not to allow things like politics or religion or the opinion of other people to be the origin of the obstacles in your path. And instead, allow your unwanted manifestations, overcoming those, to bring you joy. Gaining new perspective on a perceived disability, overcoming a chronic painful condition, releasing a relationship that no longer serves you, moving on from a career that no longer makes you happy or provides the stream of income that you're looking for. These are the obstacles that you have placed in your own paths. These deserve your attention, your focus, your clarity. Due to the polarity of your universe, there is an almost constant 50-50 split in your politics, as in many other topics. Due to this polarity and the intent of those in politics to control others, they end up accomplishing very little. And from our perspective, they deserve very little of your attention. That is all. Hello, everyone. It's David. I am back. I uh, took some time to go back and listen to the playback. It's, it's always amazing to me how much I forget uh, so quickly after one of these channeling sessions. Uh, I do like what I heard this time. I like that they were able to pick up the pace uh, and be more uh, specific in their examples and things like that. I was not expecting the example of uh, my, drive, uh, my drives to work or when I was uh, going to jobs every day. Um, how I manifested uh, very little traffic around me and a very stress-free uh, drive every day. Uh, I'm still able to do that to this day. I've always had uh, pretty good uh, manifestations when it came to, to driving. Uh, I'm a car fanatic. Uh, I usually drive fast cars and certainly have spent my uh, fair share of time driving over the speed limit, uh, but certainly have that sixth sense that, that I'm sure many of you have. You know, something tells you to slow down, you slow down, and then suddenly you see a police officer on the side of the road or, you know, helping you avoid an accident or something like that. So I, I will tell you that I have driven uh, ticket-free and accident-free for many, many, many years. Uh, the last time I had an incident uh, was a speeding ticket in Alabama back when I was 24, and that's been quite a while ago. So... Um, Pretty good uh, manifestations around driving, but certainly uh, moving to Northern California, uh, the traffic was far worse than it was when I was living in Seattle. And I also uh, was visiting different uh, retail locations where uh, you know I was in the car for an hour to two hours each way every day. And you know the distance didn't change, and, and there was still traffic, but my attitude toward it was so much better. Uh, I was not rushed. I, rushed, I was not stressed. I very, very often found myself on a busy freeway uh, in the middle of San Francisco, you know, going down the 101 uh, from San Francisco down towards San Mateo uh, that's really packed in the morning and looking around and realizing there was not a car in sight that I was all alone sort of in the middle lane, just, just cruising along, enjoying my commute. Uh, so that's, that's a good story. And I'm glad that was shared because I certainly like to share that story myself, uh, because I, I look at that and think, okay, that's a pretty easy manifestation because, you know, it's just traffic. It's not, you know, millions of dollars or, or anything like that. But if I can manifest a situation where I'm essentially controlling the traffic around me, that makes me realize exactly how powerful I am. And when I start to doubt something, uh, like the house that I want to manifest right now in Northern California, I remember that scenario and it helps me very much in my focusing and my manifesting. 
I believe I've shared that my blocks of thought that I'm receiving from the stream have become supersized in recent years, and the momentum seems to uh, continue to grow. And so now, uh, anytime I'm in a relaxed state or not specifically thinking about um, you know anything in particular, I get these just large blocks of thought of, of, of great clarity on a variety of topics, so often things that I'm not even thinking about that aren't even on my radar. And that happened to me this morning. Uh, I woke up, and I, uh, I'm working on uh, putting all this into book form, and all of a sudden, I got this entire block of thought, this amazing clarity around transgendered people. And I have to tell you that I don't really know any transgendered people. Uh, I have certainly met some, but I don't have any transgender friends or anything like that. It's not something that's really on my radar in my thought process. Certainly, I've had conversations on the topic, but it's not something that I'm looking uh, have been looking for information on or to gain clarity on. But boom, there it was, this amazing clarity uh, from the stream uh, with opinions that are, you know, far more advanced than my own and very different uh, than what I would necessarily deliver as my opinion. I've always sort of said, you know, it's not really part of my path in life, but, you know, certainly as a gay man, who am I to judge somebody else? Uh, you know, that's their business and I support them. And, uh, you know, that was kind of it, but, uh, this was amazing clarity. So I think what I'm going to do for the next podcast is I actually tackle that topic. I'm going to try to meditate some more. I've got the notes that I wrote when I was, you know, in the meditative state, allowing the stream to write for me. I will tell you that the, the stream in written form, uh, is, is pretty fantastic and pretty clear. And I, uh, just like with my voice form, I don't edit it at all. You pretty much get exactly what's coming out. I don't want to edit anything or change anything because even if it doesn't necessarily sound necessarily sound perfect. I very much want it to be authentic. So on the next podcast, we're going to uh, address the topic of transgender. So uh, certainly I hope that you will tune in. I hope that you continue to support and listen to these podcasts. I appreciate you listening. And certainly if you have a question topic that you would like covered, the email is the stream of David at gmail.com. Again, that's the stream of David at gmail.com. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.